Inside Mercer Basketball with Coach Bob Hoffman and your host, Rick Cameron. Brought to you by Wild Wing Cafe. Well, hello everyone. Welcome to Wild Wing Cafe. We're here at the shops at River Crossing, Macon, Georgia. Time to talk uh, Inside Mercer Basketball with Head Coach Bob Hoffman. Coach, busy time of the year as a head coach to try to uh, get ready for games, get ready for postseasons just around the corner. Yet, there's always a tomorrow You've got to uh, stay on the road. A lot of the high school programs are reached postseason play with region tournaments and so forth. Kind of paint us a picture what it's like this time of the year, trying to maintain a recruiting schedule, you, you and the staff, yet still practice and win games. Yeah, we've all been out several days. This is the first week we really hadn't had two games or three in a week in a long time. So Saturday we play at home against Wofford, get through, uh, I leave like five o'clock the yeah. next morning yeah. recruiting and then gone to Florida a couple days, Texas a day, back in crazy stuff, you know, like I even had a flight that ended up going to, um, we ended up landing in Tallahassee because of bad weather that I had to drive to make. And I mean, just yeah. those are the yeah. kind of things that you don't think about, but right. I've been gone, uh, I was gone four days in a row. Uh, trying to find players or seeing guys we'd already signed, yeah. keeping the home fires burning, and the, our assistants were doing all the same kind of things all all over uh, many different states wow. uh, because it was such a window we yeah. had there. I, I came back for a Tuesday morning practice after the Florida trip and then left again Tuesday afternoon yeah. out to uh, see a couple recruits in Texas. Let's expand it just a little bit further, Coach. A lot of our fans and basketball fans in general don't realize uh, let's talk about the recruiting process. When does it start? How far in advance are you looking at players? In other words, what class are you trying to recruit now, and where do you start? Well, I mean, we're we're after we're still trying to finish this year, uh, so we're not sure. Sometimes you're not sure exactly what's going to transpire when you get to the end of the season. Uh, but we're we're working at that yep. right now, and then we're also working on 19s and working on 20 2020s. Uh, trying to see as many as we possibly can. Uh, but it mainly starts every year in the summer where you get an opportunity to see multiple kids yeah. at different uh, sites all over the country when you can get unlimited view viewing of them. Because yeah. during the year, you can only have seven opportunities to evaluate or contact them on each player. And that's every year. So if we recruit a kid from the sophomore, junior, and senior year, then that would be 21 opportunities during there, but that's not counting the summer. Those don't even count on yeah. the uh, on those different visits. So uh, we we've been identifying, working through. Then you try to figure out what their grades are, how they fit the profile of Mercer. Yeah. Uh, and and then there, I mean, there's multiple kids. I mean, let's take Desmond Ringer for example. Okay. We recruited him for four years. Yeah. Uh, and then it got down to the end, and uh, South Carolina came in late. And we, he, had, he came down and officially visited us in South Carolina. He chose South Carolina even though we were recruiting for four years right. and saw him a lot. And then he ended up coming back to us at the end. But uh, you got you to go after guys that some people might think are a little above you and, uh, and have a good balance of different kids yeah. because you're just not sure how the process is going to take place. Uh, there's one that's starting at Oklahoma State right now that I've kn known his family for a long time. He, yeah. uh, we were the first official visit, and then uh, he blew up and wow. hit six threes in front of a bunch of people, and then he had top ten programs in the country. And we we're still hanging in yeah. there, but we didn't end up getting him. So you just don't know. I mean, yeah. you've got to work it really hard, and you got to get a little lucky, too, in the midst of that. And, you know, it, then you flip that, and you look at a Langston Hall who ended up being – an uh, unbelievable player, but yeah. he only had two or three offers, Ivy Leagues, because he wasn't putting up the kind of numbers yeah. that would make somebody look at him. He was yeah. a pass-first guy. And so it's not an exact science. Yeah. And you can tell that even by the NBA and the NFL. Sure. When they draft or pick guys, sometimes 
they think first round picks, you think it's automatic, but it's not automatic just because they've done all their due diligence doesn't always mean that person's going to make it. So, Coach, of the hundreds of basketball players or possibly a JUCO transfer, what on the, is the criteria to make the Bob Hoffman list of a serious consideration for a future player? Well, I mean, there's a bunch of criteria. I mean, one, you want a guy that's a hard worker, that's a team guy, that's going to give all he possibly can to his team being successful first. And, uh, you know, we, we try to find guys that fit academically, uh, that are from good backgrounds or about the right things and then you can try to mesh all of that together uh, But it's not an easy. It's not a it's not a co cookie cutter yeah. formula for every kid because everybody's from different Perspectives and backgrounds and you got to balance all of it out. And that's what we try to do uh, Every day and then you're in the midst of playing games and trying to win yeah. games <laughs> at the same time And it, it can be overwhelming. Yeah, if you, if you don't uh, make sure that you stay on path with it. And in some years you may need one, two, or three. Right. Uh, and other years you may have a graduating class of six or seven and need a large incoming right. class. Right, and that's why we're losing six seniors this year. We signed five early, uh, five uh, high school guys from different parts of the country. So uh, it, it's, it's been all encompassing for sure this season. Well, one outstanding recruit uh, playing basketball currently for the Bears is Corey Gilby. We're going to take a break. Go to Hawkins Arena, talk to Corey. We'll be right back with more Oklahoma. inside Mercer basketball. Cougars. So here's the game plan. Rush into the Wild Wing Cafe and tackle one of our new steakhouse burgers. 100% Angus, 100% great. It's an all-star lineup that can win you tickets to the biggest games of the year. Where? Concerts on the quad, early morning tailgates, your bearded professor with his suede elbow patches, or you can give someone different answers. So go ahead and get ready for the typical questions, but know that Mercer has given you anything but typical answers. We're back at Hawkins Arena. Time now for a look at one of our student athletes. We're going to profile Corey Kilby today, our junior from Ada, Oklahoma. All right, Corey, for the benefit of our fans, uh, I've been to Oklahoma several times, but tell us about growing up in Ada. Growing up in Ada, it's a small town, so there's not really much to do. You kind of have to make your own fun, but uh, that's what I loved about it is we had to go out and be adventurous and just find fun things to do. So I enjoyed living in the small town life. Now, as you moved on up to the high school level, uh, basketball, obviously you're doing very well at You're improving constantly, but you had pretty good uh, other careers as well, including a good run at football, I believe. Yes, sir. Uh, Tell us about it. Don't be bashful. <laughs> well, I was a quarterback in my high school. My high school is actually... They have the most state championships in Oklahoma with 19. Wow. And uh, so I was a starting quarterback for two seasons. Uh, ended up all stating my senior year at quarterback. And uh, it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed playing football. There is a reason on an inbounds pass, if we ever need to throw it the length of the floor, there's a reason the referee hands you the ball, correct? <laughs> yes, sir. Usually, <laughs> we practice that a lot, actually. Yes, I'm, I'm usually the guy that takes it out and in games. Coach will sub me in if I'm not in the game yeah. to throw in the long pass. So. All right, Corey, let's talk about how you came about uh, heading to Mercer University. Okay, well, my family's originally from the east, okay. so they're from North Carolina, so I knew at some point I wanted to get back east. <clears throat> and uh, originally, I've grown up a North Carolina fan. Mm, so okay. the story behind this is I was watching Mercer before I even knew who they were when they played Duke in the tournament. Okay. I was watching them, and uh, I was rooting for them because I'm not a Duke fan. <laughs> I do not like Duke. And so, Unlike uh, Jalen Stowe. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so after they won, I just kind of became a fan. It was yeah. funny. A month later is when Coach Hoffman called and just uh, let me know that they were going to recruit me. So it was pretty cool how that. Talk to us about now in your uh, junior year, what life is like as a college basketball player. Is it anything what you envisioned uh, when you were younger or not? Oh, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot of hard work, and I knew it was going to be like that. But it's, I mean, it's what I wanted to do since I was young, and I loved it. Uh, I love being in this system. I, I know it better since I'm a junior. I'm yeah. an upperclassman, so I'm more comfortable in, the, in coaches' offense. And so I'm yeah. really... 
I think I'm getting more confident, and so I'm really enjoying where I'm at right now. I think you hit the nail right on the head, your confidence level. I've watched you play every minute since you've been here. I can sense a big difference in you. What do you attribute the keys to being a better basketball player? Uh, really, it's been a lot. Uh, the coaches and my teammates really just give me confidence, telling me to keep shooting, keep shooting, yeah. and then obviously spend as much time in the gym as I can, whether right. it's with the coaches or by myself in the gym, just shooting, yeah. trying to get uh, as many reps as I can. Obviously, it takes a lot of hours to be a college basketball player. If you ever had any free time or during the off season, help our fans to get to know you a little bit better. What do you enjoy doing when you're not playing basketball? Well, I'm not playing basketball. I love, well, my parents live in Atlanta now, so I love going up there and yeah. hanging out with yeah. my family. And uh, my, my little brother and my dad love play, playing Xbox. So uh -huh. when I go up there, that's what I love to do. But I'm a big movie guy. If I can go to the movie theater, I'm always at the movies. I go at least two, three times a month if yeah. I can. All right. uh, I know you guys had a, uh, a summer trip last year. Tell us about uh, the experience of uh, being with this team and other ways you might have matured even off the basketball court. Oh, the trip that we went to um, in the Dominican Republic yes. was really good. We were there for two weeks. We got to spend one week playing basketball and one week doing really hard manual labor in a city called El Cercado. And it was really good for us as a team. We got to bond and especially the new guys that came in. Uh, we really just got to spend time together because it was just us for two weeks. And so we were always around each other and it was really good to just get to know each other better and spend that time. But then the work that we put in while we were there, it really showed us yeah. uh, just how hard we need to work in order to be successful. And yeah. I really think that that stuck with us and it will stick with us throughout this season. Speaking of being successful, this basketball team has talent. There's no doubt about that. You've got hard workers. Tell us about the chemistry of this team as we prepare for conference play. I think that's what's really going to carry as far <coughs> as the chemistry that we have because we got a lot of older guys that have been together for a while now. We have this five starters that we had from last year and they're back. And so the chemistry on our team I think is going to be one of the most important things that will help us be successful this season. All right, you're going to get a fine education here. What are you? What degree are you pursuing? And when you accomplish that degree, when you hang the sneakers up, what do you hope to do professionally? Well, right now I am majoring in communication studies with a minor in business, and I haven't figured out exactly what I want to do, but uh, I really want to do something with sports. I, yeah. I've just been involved with sports my whole life, so I don't know if that'd be coaching or doing some type of sports analyst, something like that, but that's what I want to do. Some hey, I can't do this forever. I've got to retire one day. <laughs> I might be taking your job. <laughs> Corey, thanks for visiting with us. You're a great uh, contributor a lot to this program. We appreciate all that you Well, did. thank you very much. That's Corey Kilby, junior out of Ada, Oklahoma. We're going to take a break, and we'll return back up at Wild Wing with more Inside Mercer Basketball. I have purchased uh, five Jeeps here at Five Star, and my sister-in-law from Florida actually came up and purchased uh, Jeep here. The way you're treated, the uh, uh, satisfaction, the service, just the overall good experience. And, you know, for me to come back that many times speaks for itself. Hey, all you Bear fans, I know we're having a great time at this game. It's exciting, fun. We're getting after it. If you want to have a good time after this game, you need to go over to Margarita's in Mercer Village. They have amazing Mexican food and they're going to take care of you. All kinds of specials. You can find what you want. Look at my body. It's working good for me. Come on over and check them out at Mercer Village, Margarita's. Well, we're back here at Wild Wing Cafe and that was a great segment. Uh, with Corey Kilby and the voice of the Bears, Rick Cameron. And now we're gonna be joined by Josh Davis, who's our basketball operations guy. Welcome That's right, to the Coach. show, man. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so Josh, uh, explain to everybody a little bit of where you came from, what you were doing. Let's talk about, I mean, you've done so many things and, and you're only like 19 years old. <laughs> talk about what you did last year. What, what was, uh, where, where you came from? Okay, sure. Mercer. Yeah, Limestone College in Gaffney, South Carolina. It's a small Division II school there in Conference Carolinas. I was the assistant coach recruiting coordinator for Limestone and uh, their men's basketball program. So that's where I came from. Yeah. Um, and I've done a lot of things. How many years since were you then. there? I was there five years. Um, and before that, I was a graduate assistant for Coach Larry, who's on the staff here at, now at Liberty, at Liberty University. Uh, so you got, where did you get your degree from? 
You did get a degree, right? I did. Oh, I got a couple, good. Coach. Oh, Actually, you did? Well, three. Good. So really? one from one from Liberty. It was a grad degree in human services. You got your own degree, right? None of your girlfriends helped you with them. None of no yeah. no help from any girls. My wife says she helped me with mine. That's the reason I, I that's, asked. That's not true either. I would I would believe it. Oh, you could. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so where where did you get them? Uh, so Liberty uh, grad degree, and then Laterna University in Longview, Texas, is where I got my undergrad. So a long time ago, when you were growing up, your dad was a big time coach, coach forever, well known in the country. Was that the reason you got into coaching, you enjoyed watching what he was doing, or were there other factors that entered into your decision uh, when you were going to try to be a coach? I think that's the main reason, coach. I think uh, I really looked up to my father. Uh, he loved me and uh, I loved him a lot and still do. And uh, yeah, I just tried to follow in his footsteps, and I did try to do my own thing. I tried to get into uh, medicine, I tried to get into other things, and I just felt like my heart was pulling me back to basketball every every time I tried to do something else. So I know this summer you shared uh, in our individual camp, overnight camp, yeah. uh, you talked about your dad passionately. It was a moving uh, speech that you gave to our guys in our prime time that we do. Uh, every every night on those individual camps, um, and I know you remember it. What what were the most important things you shared with those guys that night? You remember? Uh, well, Coach, we um, didn't even talk about that. We we're going to talk no, about we this, didn't. but, but the it main, just came to me. The main thing was that he told me he loved me yeah. every night, and wow. I knew that he loved me, and I knew that he loved my mom, and uh, those were the the it biggest was, things. It was so moving to see those young men that were like eight to 17 year old guys and they were so fixed, they were just locked into what you were saying and there were several of them even after that talked to you about that, right? Yep. Even some of our players about what you were able to share. And we get, to a, lot, we get a lot of those opportunities in, in our staff. It's important to us as I know it has been wherever you've been. What do you, what do you think are some in, uh, key ingredients of why that is the way it is with our program? And, those opportunities come around so often? Well, I think those opportunities come around um, in, in the game of basketball and any yeah. competitive sport in, gen in general. Um, I think you do a great job of uh, manufacturing times to um, speak truth into guys' lives and to speak um, about our past experiences, whether it's a team meeting or just before practice or just sharing. Um, team building, team bonding is huge and knowing each other where each other have come from is a big deal of in that so uh, i was glad to be able to share in that camp um, and i was glad to be able to share with those kids because like like you know so many and you you recruit really good kids um, we've got a group of um, outstanding guys, yeah. individuals that I've, ne I've never been around a group that's so well-rounded as this group here at mercer and um, it's still, even even with the way they are now, they a lot of them, a couple of them have grown up without father figures in their lives. So um, it was it was un, it was great to be able to share that and great to be able to see the response that I got. Yeah, it was an amazing amazing night. We had several of them, but it just came to me just when you were talking about your dad, and then getting to see him a couple times during the year. He's been at some games, but uh, maybe talk about. Uh, look, all the things that you get to do. Uh, I don't know. I know we may yeah. not have enough time to go into all of them because you do so many and you do them so well. Talk about uh, just how how you kind of wrap your arms around it and try to jump in there and, and all the different things that you have to be responsible for. Yeah, was well, as, as you know, it's a day-to-day -day process. So every day could be something completely different. But uh, you know, I just do long story short everything that needs to be done behind the scenes to help this program operate um, seamlessly and help you to keep thinking about that's what you hard, need to keep hard. thinking about yeah that's hard to keep up with me <laughs> yeah. well you've got everything going from this TV show to <laughs> everything else so um, there's a lot to keep up with but um, my job honestly is to hopefully um, as you know you don't you don't notice your elbow until it starts hurting and just hopefully that you don't notice anything. I didn't know it was hurting. Exactly. And it, hopefully that you don't notice anything. Yeah. Everything's working fine and 
just business as usual for everyone else, the basketball staff? Well, it's amazing what you've been able to do. We're grateful and thankful for everything you do every day, Josh, to make us successful. And uh, he's been with us this year, and we've got some games coming up that we need to finish well, but you're an integral part of all that. And we're going to be right back to more of the Bob Hoffman Show, but it's really inside Mercer basketball because I thought it was radio. That's how bad I am. But we'll be right back with Rick Cameron, the voice of the Bears. Drawing. Introducing Droid DNA by HTC. It's not an upgrade to your phone, it's an upgrade to yourself. For over 20 years, Mercer has relied on Forsyth Street Orthopedics. Their team of Dodgers helped keep our players on the court. As a graduate of Mercer and a partner of Forsyth Street Orthopedics, we are proud to sponsor and take care of Mercer athletes. We work with Mercer Sports Medicine to return our injured athletes to competition as soon as their injuries allow and hopefully protect them from further injury. For Scythe Street Orthopedics, getting better together. Go Bears! Bears! We're back at Wild Wing talking inside Mercer basketball with head coach Bob Hoffman. Great interview that last segment with Josh Davis. Josh does a lot of things and coach another group of things coming up uh, in addition to coaching and recruiting. Yeah. you got camps coming up this summer. Yeah, and he's working on that right now, too. So that's a, he didn't even talk about that as being one of his responsibilities. Now you'll take that run with it. Yeah, him. we have several dates. He'll be up on uh, line. Uh, we've been doing it for multiple years all over the place. It's one of the most rewarding times of the year where our players get to be involved and we have team camps and individual camps. Uh, nothing like being part of basketball camp and uh, we're, we're excited about this summer's camp. And it's never too early to start asking questions no. now about uh, making plans for the Yeah, team. and they can go online and check that out at bobhoffmanhoops.com. All right, Coach, let's talk about the uh, win this past weekend over Walford. Great job. Uh, we might have had the dawning of a uh, new feature three-point shooter in the league. Well, uh, he's, I mean, Ross Cummings has been playing really good. Uh, He's kind of grown into it over the last two months. This summer, he didn't have a very good summer. Yeah. Um, you know, and he was pushing and trying to get back into it. And uh, all along recruiting him, I knew he could shoot the ball. And he was a really good offensive player. But his demeanor and how he would get down on himself so easy kept him from, I think, being all that he could be. And these two years, he's really matured in that, all the assistant coaches. And, Everybody's continued to stay on him, including myself, to yep. try to, hey, you, you can't let yourself get there. And I think it started in December when he was on the scout team. He started running. Uh, he was actually Bradford for us against East Tennessee State, okay. and he just yep. he went off. We couldn't guard him. He was hitting <laughs> shots, and it, it has just continued yep. to now. And uh, it's great to see uh, because he could have he was he was buried on the bench. He wasn't getting to play. Yep. He wasn't, and most people might sulk or, you know, he kept being a great teammate. He kept working on his game, kept believing good things could happen. Yep. And then when uh, Rion went down, his opportunity came up. Uh, he stepped in and starting at Greensboro, made some big shots for right. us and uh, really hadn't looked back since then. Well, that spark on Saturday, this three-point shooting, really helped elevate you and get a big win. Large crowd, had it, the building was rocking and rolling. Faculty staff showed up more than 600. Great day. and. Uh, Justifiably so, Sonic Player of the Week is. Yeah, Ross Cummings in, uh, from Nashville, Tennessee. And he, he's a sophomore, and uh, we hope he makes many more of those shots as, as we move forward. It's been, it's been just fantastic to watch him get in there and uh, make shots. In fact, one that he hit against Wofford was right in front of me. And I told you on the radio after yeah. the game, uh, I saw an opening, and I usually tell him to rip it up if I think they're open. A little thing I do, and I told him to drive it because the guy was giving him a rim, and he he decided to go ahead and shoot, it and he made it, and he kind of looked back at me as running down the floor, kind of made a little smile. It's so a good thing it went in, huh? Well, I don't know, but uh, it definitely it definitely did go in. Yes, it did. All right, coach. Also, the Marcos delivery of the week. Well, Marcus Cohen's been playing great. He's done a good job for us and made some good passes over the last few games. And, uh, People are having a hard time guarding him, and he's got to keep getting in the lane and finding, finding his teammates, and he's 
really valuable and all those things. But to me, one of the other key ingredients for him, uh, for our program, is he's got to keep working on his defensive end because he can yeah. really guard when he yeah. chooses yeah. to. He gets down a stance and he's athletic as all get out. Seven games remaining, two on the road, three at home, uh, two on the road, beginning this weekend, uh, big series against uh, first Chattanooga on Saturday, then on to Birmingham to play Sanford yeah. on Monday. Yeah, Chattanooga, uh, Coach Paris has done a great job. Uh, hadn't shown up in wins and losses, but they've been in almost every oh, yeah, game. Absolutely. They battled, they battled. We, we were fortunate to beat them at our place. They had a couple guys out. They'll be back playing when we play them at their place on Saturday. And uh, just uh, a tough environment. They always have great crowds. Uh, they love basketball in Chattanooga. They're, they understand it. Uh, the fans are very knowledgeable. Uh, so we understand it'll be a tough physical game. The defensive pack line that they play, a ver ver variation of it, the Wisconsin that Coach brought with him. Uh, tough to get shot, easy shots. And then Monday, it'll be just a flip. Uh, Coach Padgett does a great job, but they're going to press and they're going to put zone defenses at you, multiple ones, and you're going to have to be ready for it. So within 48 hours, it'll be two completely different games. And uh, the Chattanooga game follows a women's game of ETSU in Chattanooga, so the fans are going to be rocking and rolling before we even hit the floor. Yeah, I hope they all leave right after that. <laughs> all right, Coach, the SOCON, uh, take a look at the conference standings to make an occupational medicine. Look at SOCON. Yeah. ETSU uh, still unbeaten 12-0, and and after that, Boy, it's just a uh, fair game as to how it's going to finish out yeah, the rest Bradford's of the season. Yeah, Bradford's playing like unbelievable, yeah. and he's making shot after shot, and uh, he's just becoming more and more difficult to guard in every game, but they're, they're playing great. And then uh, Wofford and Greensboro, Greensboro's making a little run too, so uh, at these last few games will be interesting yeah. to see how that plays out, but probably nobody's had any more impact on the league than Citadel has Absolutely. the last couple weeks, and uh, Coach Bauckham has his guys after they beat us, they lost East Tennessee at the buzzer, and then they beat uh, Wofford and Furman at home. They, they play uh, Chattanooga as we speak here, and so no telling how they're going to finish, but they're very hard and difficult to get ready for. All right, Coach, it's not that far of a drive. We'd love to see some of our fans uh, greet us up at Chattanooga. Then on to Birmingham on Monday night as we get to the end of the season. Yeah, it'll be fun. We'd love to have them. Love, always love to have the Mercer folks in the stands. Makes a huge impact the outcome of the game. All right, we're going to be right back here next week when we return with more Inside Mercer Basketball.